Amen. We thank the Lord for his care. Amen over us. Amen for watching over us, keeping us. Amen. Well, I guess I'm having to be the fill-in today. But, uh, yep. uh, but uh, we'll just do the best. The Lord gave me a thought, so we'll share it with you this morning. Amen. Trust it'll be a help to your soul today. Once again, so good to see every one of you today. So glad you're here. I know you could have been anywhere else today, but I'm glad you chose to be in the house of the Lord this morning, and I believe the Lord will reward you for it. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of Psalms and 142. The book of Psalms and 142. Book of Psalms and 142. find it, let's stand to our feet for the reading of God's word. Bible reads this way, verse 1, Psalms 142, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him, I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no one, no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. You. you may be seated this morning. I want to take my thought this morning out of verse 3, when David Pen these words, he said, My spirit, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. For a few moments this morning, I want to talk about the path that leads to God. The path that leads to God. This was a time in David's life where David was in the midst of great turmoil. He was on the run from Saul. Saul was seeking his life to kill him simply because Saul was jealous of what David had acquired of God. We know very well who David was. David was anointed to be king somewhere around the age of 13, 14 years old. He was anointed to be king of Israel, but it didn't mean that he took up that uh, position at that moment. David had to grow up. David had to learn how to work with people. David had to learn how to trust God. David had to learn things about life before he ever grew into the position that God had for him. I find that's one of the greatest frustrations in the lives of Christians today is they think that when they feel like the Lord has spoken something to them, it's going to be like instant grits. It's going to be happening right now. But oftentimes it doesn't happen that way. We have to grow into those situations. The Lord gives us a glimpse into His will, and He kind of tells us, of, this is the path that I've chosen for you, and this is the way that I want to go. It doesn't mean I want you to go. It doesn't mean that we won't have our times of trouble and trial and pitfalls in our life, but it does mean that if we'll just trust the unseen hand of God in our life, that the Lord will allow us to get to where he's destined us to go. We find that here David is in the cave of Adullam more than likely as he has been dismissed by uh, the Philistines as someone that was uh, not suitable to be in their army. David really didn't have a whole lot of friends at this time. He was just a man on the run. He was a man without a country. Amen. He was seeking a country, but he just didn't have one right now. And so we find that David's troubles, David's trials had compounded upon him. And here he is. He's in a place all by himself. 
I want you to know that sometimes when it comes to you and God, it's not a bad thing to be all by yourself. There's times in our life when we love to surround ourselves with people because misery loves company. But I'm going to tell you most times that people cannot solve your problems. Your spiritual problems cannot be solved by your brothers and sisters. Our spiritual problems can only be wrought out through prayer and supplication to God. When we surrender ourselves to prayer and contemplation in the Lord Jesus Christ. David said this. He said, I poured out my complaint before God. And I want you to look in this psalm that I read to you tonight. There's two, th two thoughts that are basically woven through this psalm this morning. The first one is that there's a sense of helplessness and hopelessness uh, of man. Apart from God, friends, we're, we're, we're doomed to fail. There's nothing, amen, that's going to come good out of the end of our life if we're apart from Jesus Christ the Lord. I'm going to tell you right now, you were born to serve the Lord. Whether you make the choice or not to serve God, you were born to serve God. You were born out of His will. You were born out of His image. And you were born out of a desire for you to be a praise offering unto Him and love Him and magnify Him in your life. And then we find the second part of that thought in the latter parts of the psalm is that there's an application of a helpless soul to God. Yeah, man without God is helpless and hopeless, but a man, a man, when he'll uh, come to the thought and the reality of his helplessness, God will help him. And this is what we see woven in this psalm. And so when David says that I poured out my complaint before the Lord, this is more of David not complaining, but it's a relief that he begins to pray unto the Lord God of heaven. He's got somebody that's going to listen to him. And not only somebody that's going to listen to him, God's not going to pat him on the back and tell him it's going to be all right. God's a way maker, friend. I don't know how in the world we've reduced the Lord to such a low state in our life to feel like that He can't help us in our times of trouble and trial. I want you to understand He's the only help, friend. I can't help myself. I can't uh, handle all of these things in myself. Amen. That come my way. But I have an advocate with the Father. The Bible calls Him Jesus Christ the righteous. Uh, amen. That has prayed for me and prayed for the intervention of the hand of God in my life. That He may help me day in and day out and so when I pray and when I express my needs my desires before God it's not that I am I am at a loss it's a relief that I got somebody amen that's interested in my plight I was talking with a fella yesterday and uh, uh, they were giving away little things there uh, in Bladenburg and, and I, I looked at him and I said you know somehow he got to talking about complaining. I said, well, I don't want to complain. I said, and nobody don't like to listen to you complain. He said, I don't care. He said, I'll complain for you. He said, I love to complain. I want to complain. I'm going to complain. Uh, he said, it's just what I like to do. And I, well, it is some people that like to complain, but I like to call upon the name of the Lord. Complaining don't make me feel better. Complaining just adds weights to the shoulders. Uh, oh, but when I find relief in Jesus Christ, the oh Lord. Oh, I can say, God, hey amen, I can't do this, but you can. You told me things that were impossible with man are possible with God this morning. Uh, I want you to understand today, church, uh, we're not at a loss if we've got Jesus Christ today. Uh, I'm not at the hands of an angry world today. Uh, oh, Oh, but I'm kept by the hands of a loving God this morning uh, who knows my path, who knows my way, who knows my comings and my goings. Uh, amen. And is able to help me uh, to be an overcomer and a conqueror through him. And David said, oh, God, what a relief it is. Amen. To be able to call upon your name in that cave. The cave is a lonely place. 
The cave is, a, uh, is such a way, amen, that it just doesn't bring much joy to your heart. You ever been to the mountains and uh, up in uh, around Gatlinburg and over past Gatlinburg uh, and you get down in those caves? Uh, Oh, you get down in there without artificial light, it's just complete darkness. And they tell me if you'll stay in those caves 24 hours in utter darkness that you'll lose your sanity within 24 hours. Oh, but David didn't lose his sanity in this cave, friend. He found his help in God. He found his peace in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord gave him aid. The Lord gave him confidence. Why? Because David was a hero in the eyes of a people. He was a giant killer. But David did Jesus Christ moving us. I said, God, when I didn't know my path, huh? he said, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, and that word overwhelmed right there in the Hebrew, it just simply means to be feeble, to be faint, and to be weak. And he said, God, he said, when I'm weak, God, when I can't help myself, God, when I don't know what to do, he said, God, you knew my path. Oh, this had been a good place in the Word of God. I can't add to or take away from it. But my little mind says this would be a good place to have put in there but God. Huh? Oh, I love it. Hey, Amen. When there's times in our life when our back's against the wall. Amen. And everything looks like it's just going to fall apart. But here comes the testimony. But God. But God stepped in. But God made a way of escape. But God made a way where there was no way. Who are you serving today? Oh, I'm not serving an image made up in the minds of men. I'm serving the great God of heaven who was and is and who will ever be. He doesn't have a beginning. He doesn't have an ending. He's from everlasting to everlasting. Uh, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's our everything this morning. Amen. Amen. David said, I didn't know, but God, you did. You knew my path. You knew the way I walked. Why? Because he followed God. Hallelujah. Sometimes God leads us to the dry places. Uh, but aren't you glad today that our God, amen, can give you, uh, amen, water in the desert? Aren't you glad that God can give you shade in the desert? Uh, hallelujah. That God can make you prosper in the desert if we'll trust him. Jeremiah spoke in his word in chapter 1 and verse 5. He said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. What did he say? He said, Before, amen, I formed you in the belly, I knew who you were. I want you to know today, God knows your path. Amen. Yeah. God knows where you're going, friend. He not only knows your path, He knows what's on your path. So many times things get in our way and they try to derail us on our path. They try to get us frustrated. They try to get us discontented in the way. I want you to understand, don't allow the enemy to use people against you. Don't allow the enemy to let people discourage you in the way of the cross today. I'm telling you, God's bigger than your adversaries. God's bigger than your doubters. God's bigger than your skeptics. God's worth more than your detractors today. Hey Amen. You don't have to let the word of a man define you when the love of God defines who we are today when the blood of Jesus defines the church today I'm not born again by the blood of man I'm born again by the blood of Jesus Christ the Lord I am his and he is mine I've been engrafted into a heavenly bloodline and no man amen can undo what God 
has done in my life and in your life. Yeah, people have got their own ideas about religion. Well, I told you a long time I was done with religion. I'm not religious. I'm born again. What about you? Huh? Religion's for men. And religion's for the proud. Amen. Deliverance is for the him that, them that have been set free by Jesus Christ the Lord. I'm holiness not because of a denomination. I'm holiness because I've been born of the blood of the Holy Son of God. Woo, y'all get that after a while and shout about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Man didn't make me holy. Jesus makes me holy. Jesus keeps me holy. Amen. Jeremiah also spoke in 29 and 11. He said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Amen. Oh, this is from God. He said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Oh, I preached about expectation Wednesday night, but the Lord has an expected end for our path. The Lord has a positive end for our path. If we'll surrender to Him and live for Him, it's going to be glory, glory. Hallelujah. We're going to live and abide with Jesus Christ forevermore. I submit to you this morning, are we on God's path? Are we going God's way? Because He knows, amen, where it leads you and I to go. I think about how David, being one of the greater men in the Word of God, the only one to have the moniker attached to him, that he was the only man that was after God's own heart. But David was one of the more flawed men in the Word of God. David had his ups and downs. I read what one fellow said, if David had prayed in the palace like he prayed in the cave, he'd have never had Bathsheba problems. Huh? That has merit for you and I. If we pray in the easy times like we pray in the hard times, it make those hard times more bearable. Amen? Prayer's powerful. Prayer's that communication between us and the Lord that He desires of us. That He may empower us with His Spirit to endure the hardships of this life. Oh, I'm on a path today. What about you? Hallelujah. When I left my house this morning, I got on 41, came down to Marsh Road, and I turned right here in this driveway. I followed a path that I knew that would lead me to a branch of Manuel Holiness Church. Amen. But back in 1987, June 17, amen, I got a new path. I was on a road that was leading me to hell. I was on a road that was leading me to destruction uh, that was littered with bad decisions. Uh, oh, but that night, somewhere after 8 o'clock, I made a decision uh, to get up, amen, and pursue after God. Amen. And I met Him there in an order of repentance. Uh, I've been on that path ever since. Uh, I've been in the bottom of the valley. I've been on the top of the mountain. Uh, but Amen? Does he know your path? Are you on the path with the Lord? This is not some nonchalant, uh, take it or leave it path. This is life and death, friend. This is what it's all about. Amen. This is joy or sadness. This is gloom or doom. I don't know about you, but when I got Jesus, I got the joy. I got the STP. Y'all remember him preaching about that? I learned how to stop and pray. I learned how to seek God. I didn't learn how to seek God because everything went my way all the time. I learned how to find God in my disappointments. I learned how to find God in my heartaches. I learned how to find God when I was just holding on. 
and I found out his grip didn't slip a bit. Huh? Huh? Amen. Why? Because if I stay on God's path, the Lord will help me and the Lord will make a way. I think about what the Apostle Paul said. Amen. We'll find it in the book of 2 Timothy. He kind of reiterated, found the heart of David. Reiterated what David was trying to tell us. In the book of 2 Timothy in chapter 4. And we find it in verse 6. The Apostle Paul, he made this statement for him now ready to be offered. How about that? Paul was so confident in his relationship with God. He was at the end of the way. He was in the Roman prison. He was awaiting execution. Wasn't running from it. Wasn't trying to escape. Wasn't trying to get out. He just wanted something to read in the clothes. To put on. But Paul said, I'm ready to be offered. Huh? My heart's right. My mind's right. I don't fear death. He said, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Huh? If I live, I'm going to live in Jesus Christ. If I die, I'm going to go be with Him. Huh? I believe the church is afraid of death today. The majority of the church is afraid that I don't have a death wish. I don't want to die. But I'm not worried about when that day comes. Why? Because my name's inscribed in the Lamb's book of life. It's written in blood. Amen. Jesus made the difference. Why should I fear something he told me not to fear? He said this. He said, for I'm now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. And then, boy, I like this. He said, I have fought a good fight. Are we fighting today? Are we fighting back today? A lot of times when the enemy comes at people and he looks at them and says, boo. It almost shatters them to the very core of their soul and they don't know what to do with it. I'm just going to give up. Why? Just because your known adversary comes against you, we're going to give up? No, I ain't going to give up. I'm going to kick him in the knee. And if he don't like that, I'm going to kick him in the other knee. Why am I going to give up just because the enemy says, I ain't got nothing. I'm going to show him I got something. I got Jesus. I got what he don't have. I got victory. I got victory in Jesus Christ the Lord. That devil ain't worth me giving up God for. I'm ready to fight the fight of faith for Jesus Christ the Lord. You say, Brother David, you just ain't never been in a fight like I have. Really? Come on. Really? Come on, Brother David. God knows Go ahead, preach it. Just because don't talk about it don't mean I ain't been there. Huh? Preach. I want you to understand I've been with him. I've battled with him in the bars of the earth. Huh? I've been there and I've said, God, what am I going to do? And then I've heard the voice say, you're going to trust me, that's what you're going to do. Huh? Because I'm your God, and you're my child, and I have begotten thee through my son. <laughs> oh, God, y'all going to get that in a few minutes, and you'll shout about it. Amen, that you belong to Jesus Christ. I want to be a warrior for Jesus Christ the Lord. I'm not a cheerleader. I'm a warrior. I'm a soldier of the cross. Somebody stopped me yesterday that's been watching on Facebook. They said, brother, they said, you sure are preaching about the cross a lot lately. I said, bro, there ain't no other message but the cross of Jesus Christ the Lord. The cross and cru- Christ crucified. That's what the Word of God instructs us to preach primarily. Amen. That Christ died for our sins, that we could have life, and we could have that life more abundantly. Amen. That I don't have to pull the dregs of sin, amen, around my body. Amen. But I've been set free from them. Jesus broke every chain. Jesus broke every yoke. I'm free. Why am I free? Because I've got blood dripping from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I'm covered by by the promise of Calvary. I'm covered by the assurance of Calvary. I'm covered in the Word of God and there ain't a thing the devil can do about it. Hey. Hallelujah! Hey. 
<laughs> oh, I know what it is to fight him after I've preached. I know what it is to battle him after I've stood up here. Amen. And went toe to toe with him. See, he, he fights me when y'all not here, when I'm not here. But it don't bother me. I know he's going to fight me, so I'm prepared for the battle. How am I prepared from the battle? Because I walk in the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. The psalmist said it in 991. He said, I'm covered under his wing. Woo! I'm in a place he can't get to. I'm in a place that he can't find me. I'm hid. Amen. In Christ Jesus the Lord. He can hurl accusations. Uh, he can shoot his fiery darts. Uh, he can say whatever he wants to say, but he just can't get to me. God said I don't have to listen to him. God said I don't have to pay him no attention. Uh, amen. But live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God and everything will be all right. Hallelujah! So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna trust God. Because I'm going to walk the path that the Lord has laid before me. He said, I fought a good fight. He said, I finished my course. I've kept the faith. And here's where it is. Here's the essence of living for God. You've got to have a mind to finish. And you've got to have a mind to hold on to faith. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What is substance? Substance is things that are real. Right? Substance. And what is evidence? Evidence are things that are is things that are tangible that is right there before you. It is proof. Proof. Come on. And so my faith in God. Amen is rewarded. Because I know God will do anything but fail. Has he ever failed you? I've failed him. But he's never failed me. Never held it against me. When I've fallen flat on my face, the only thing he did for me was pick me up, dust me off, say, come on, son. We'll get better. That's what grace is for. Uh, I didn't bust my head on the road of uh, disappointment. Grace. A man was a net that caught me before I got busted up. A man, and he picked me up and said, Come on, let's go. Learn from it. Learn from it. Why? Because I was on the right path. I was on his path. You, un you understand today how important a path is? Lord, I could tell you the Leighton and Rosalie traveling stories. Back in the days before there was MapQuest. You know, MapQuest used to print it out on paper. Yep. Now you just put in Google Maps or Waze. I like Waze. Y'all yeah. like Waze? Amen. Waze is the speeders app. Hallelujah. Because they'll warn you of the popos. Slow down. Sure enough, there's that popo. Hey, Mr. Popo. God bless you. I'm going to ease on by. And then when I get out of sight, I'm going to speed back up. Might as well tell the truth and let the Lord love you. Come on, brother. We're back in the days before you had all these apps. These people still get lost with apps. Yeah. We was going down to St. Stephen's, South Carolina one day, and the app got lost. I'm telling you the truth. That app got turned around. It said, just pull off the side of the road. <laughs> true story? I, that, that's a true story. It just said, pull off the side of the road and walk. I'm telling you the honest to God truth. Mom would have that big old map. I don't know if she had it right side up or which way she had it. But, you know, my mama won't, but what, four foot nine, something like that. And she'd had that. Had that big old LTD, but she didn't have And she was looking, and Daddy was driving like Daddy drove. And she'd say, Turn, Leighton! And we'd be almost past the all friend. Daddy, oh, 
he chewed it in there. It's a wonder we ain't dead. We get to the top of the off ramp. You know how off ramps curve around to the road? We get to the off ramp. She said, Layton, I told you one too early. Daddy'd throw it in reverse and he'd back around the off ramp, back on the interstate, snatch it down and drive, and here we go away. Rosalie, why don't you learn to read a map? It was, it was comical. I just got tired of getting lost. Tired of getting lost. But there came a day when I found the right path. We'd eventually get to where we're going, but I thank the Lord for Google. I'm one of them men, I don't never get lost. I don't never get lost. You know why? Because I always know the way back home. I might not know exactly where I am, but I will never admit to being lost. It just ain't going to happen. Because I can get back to the house. I might not fire them where I want to go. But that's beside the point. We'll figure it out. You keep turning right long enough and throw a left in there every once in a while, you'll get there. But one day, made it easier for me to find a path. And 2,000 years ago, Jesus made it easy for me to find a path. And that path led through Calvary. And I know right where Calvary is. Here's the path to Calvary. An altar of prayer. It's directly, it's a direct line to Calvary that'll take us right into the presence of the Almighty. That we can get on that path of God. Today, I don't know where all of our paths are. I would trust and hope that everybody's on that path that leads to heaven. But if you're not on that path that leads to heaven today, I want to invite you. Give God a try. I know how people can be. I know how judgmental people can be. But here's what I want to remind you. There's not one human being, flesh and blood, that's going to be your judge. Jesus Christ earned that right at Calvary to be our judge. And the only person we got to please is Jesus Christ. You hear me? The only person we got to please is Jesus Christ. And Jesus loves you more than anybody else ever loves you. More than anybody will ever love you or you'll love in your life. Jesus Christ loves you that much because he invested his life clear a path for us to walk. I want everyone to stand this morning. On this homecoming Sunday we celebrate friendships. We celebrate what God has done in the church. There'd be no greater celebration in heaven than for someone to yield their life to Jesus Christ today. Someone that is struggling to say, Lord, I'm tired of the struggle. I'm ready to just surrender it all, Lord. I'm in a cave, and Lord, I need you to come to the cave. I need you to help me. I'm crying out, Lord, because I believe in the power of prayer. And I do believe, Lord, that you do love me. And Lord, I don't want anything to stand between you and I. I want my heart to be right. I want my conscience to be clear. And Lord, I want to live for you. Help me get past the things that hinder me. Help me get past the things that cause me to stumble. Just give me that eye, give me that vision, that heart, Lord, to follow you. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed this morning. The saints of God are praying. You know how you feel. I'm telling you, Jesus is ready to meet you along the way. This may be your road to Emmaus. This may be the road where He's chosen to walk with you. This may be the place where He has sent His Spirit to burn in your heart that you may receive that help and encouragement that you need of Him today. Is there one today? Is there anyone just lift your hand and say, Remember me, I'm, I, I'm struggling. I need Jesus to help me. Thank God. Thank God for the hands. 
And he will. All he wants us to do is just say, Lord, I need your help. And if we'll surrender ourselves to him, he has promised according to his word, come and give us that help and support that we need. I'm going to open up the altars this morning for whatever you need today. And you just blend right on in with those that are coming to pray. The Lord is sufficient to minister to your heart this morning. Everyone that will, let's come to the altar and have a season of prayer this morning.